Hello, my name is Kelsey and welcome to Becoming Home. In this episode, I'm excited to show you how to work a little upholstery magic and transform an old, outdated telephone table into a charming vintage statement piece. Check out this little table. I think it has such potential. Like Joanna Gaines from Fixer Upper, I think the wear and tear on the wood just adds to the uniqueness and story of the table. Plus, with that intricate flower detail on the back, I knew I would not be able to stain or paint it with a decent result. So I chose to leave the original wood finish, but reupholster the seat in a wonderful, bold floral fabric. Clear off your table and turn it so that you can take out the screws holding the seat to the table. You'll need a variety of supplies and tools for this project. You'll need the correct size screwdriver to remove the screws. I will also be using a small flathead screwdriver to pry up the staples. Grab a pair of pliers too. You'll need a staple gun to attach the new fabric to the seat. The staple gun I have is not very powerful, so I also have a hammer to pound in the staples. Once you've removed the seat, start prying up the staples with a flathead screwdriver or similar object. Pull them out of the wood with the pliers. If you're new to upholstering, pay special attention to how the original piece of fabric is attached. This will help you put it back together with the best results. The first reupholstery project I did was on a wingback chair. I took a lot of pictures, and I needed them. You'll think it's fairly straightforward and that you'll remember, but trust me, you'll use those pictures for reference. This cushion is obviously a lot simpler than reupholstering an entire chair, but it's worth it to make note of the folds on the corners. Dismantle the separate parts that make up the cushion. Depending on the state of your item, you may need to replace the padding entirely or you may be able to reuse it. Hopefully the wood base will be in good condition. However, if you have the skills, you can always replace that too. Since the seat is fairly thin and uncomfortable, I decided to add some batting to the cushion. I love the slim, delicate silhouette of this phone table, so I didn't want to make it too plumped and domed. I wanted to keep the flat profile but raise the comfort level. I have a double layer of batting here. Decide how much you want the padding to overlap and then line up the wood and cut out the batting so that there's an even margin on every side. Make sure the wood is centered. If you start stapling at this point, the corners will be bulky from the extra padding. So decide how much you want to remove while also hoping that you don't remove too much. Cut out one corner and test it before cutting out the rest. I used a Sharpie to keep track of my corners. I decided a 90 degree cutout wasn't slim enough so I cut out an obtuse triangle. As you can see, the base is not a perfect square, but is cut out to where it meets the seat back. I traced this and then roughly cut the batting away. Once I started attaching it, however, I ended up cutting it exactly to the pattern. On the front of the chair, you want to protect the back of the sitter's thighs from the sharp wood edge. But on the back, this doesn't come into play, so you can get away with removing more material. Once you've cut out your corners, you can start stapling, and in my case hammering, the batting to the wood. Before you start, make sure that the base is turned the right way up. Otherwise, you'll cover your entire seat only to realize that the holes for the screws are on the wrong side. Staple your way around the perimeter, making sure that the corners are neat and the fabric is smooth and tight without being pulled awkwardly. After I placed the original cushion on top of my batting, I tested the thickness. I decided I hadn't reached the desired level of comfort, so I added more batting. Even though I decided to add more, I still didn't want the edges to be too bulky. To combat this, I cut out one layer of batting to the exact dimensions of the base so that it wouldn't bulk up the sides. I then cut a second layer so that it would overlap by a couple inches and hold everything together. Remember that you now have additional material on your base that you need to cover, so you'll probably need more of an overlap than before. Stack all your components and make sure the final layer has enough overlap before you start stapling. I'm testing the padding one more time to make sure I'm happy with the cushiness. If not, this would be a good time to add additional layers of batting. To do this, I would have cut out the exact pattern of the base and stacked these until I was satisfied. This way you can add more padding to the top without bulking up the sides. For instance, if you decide to add six layers but wrapped and stapled them over the edge, you run the risk that the cushion will not fit back on the table because of the added bulk and increased width. The process for this final layer of batting is pretty much the same as the first. I marked the edges with Sharpie, removed bulk at the corners, and then started stapling and hammering away. 
Since this was the final layer, I took extra care that everything was neat and smooth without being pulled too tightly or unevenly at any point. I also made sure that there were no layers poking through any gaps. The last layer should pull everything together into a tidy, self-contained package. This will make it much easier to handle when you're working with your new fabric. Spread your chosen fabric on the ground. Depending on the type of fabric you remove from the cushion, you may be able to use it as the pattern for your new fabric. Just remember that if you've added padding, the original dimensions may not give you enough overlap. The air quotes fabric I removed was a stiff plastic material, so this method didn't work for me. Depending on the pattern on your fabric, you may need to be picky about which section to use. I chose a bold floral pattern and I particularly wanted that gorgeous orange pomegranate to be center stage. If you have stripes, make sure they're straight and go in the right way when you orient your cushion onto the table. Similarly, with my floral pattern, I wanted the bottom of the pomegranate to be facing the viewer so that the scene doesn't look upside down. These are all things you need to take into consideration when aligning and cutting out your fabric. The base probably fits on the table only one way, so if you staple the fabric on the wrong direction, you'll have to remove the staples and do it again. I laid my base over the section I wanted to use, taking care that it was placed exactly where I wanted the design to be. I then used a pencil, no sharpie on your fabric please, and a ruler to measure out 4 inches from the edge of the base. I drew straight lines and then cut out the fabric. Once you've cut the fabric, fold over the edges one more time and make sure that the design looks good and that you have it oriented correctly. You can even place it back on the front table to make sure it fits and faces the right way. Now for the most exciting part, stapling your gorgeous fabric of choice onto the base. Bring the corner of the fabric over the corner of the base. Fold the edges of the fabric in so that it creates a neat line. If this is the front edge of your chair, these corners and lines will be visible, so you want to make sure they're neat and even on both sides. Make sure there are no unwanted pleats or wrinkles in your fabric before stapling it down. Work your way around the base, making sure the fabric is tight and smooth, but not too tight. Repeat the same process on the other corners of the chair, so that the corners all look uniform and neat. Make sure you're putting in enough staples to hold the fabric securely, especially if you plan on sitting on the seat. If you take your time and do it properly, this reupholstery project will last years. I found this piece of furniture while visiting my grandparents in Paducah, Kentucky. We went down to the historical district by the river, ate lunch, and browsed through a couple of antique stores. This telephone table, also known as a gossip chair, was sitting outside the door, on sale for a reduced price of $15. Needless to say, the charm and the price caught my eye. While making this video, I did some googling and found some images of very similar pieces of furniture. From that research, I think I can surmise that the company that made this was Frankson, and that the wood is mahogany. The plasticky fabric I removed had the name Maslan Duran penciled in both corners, so I googled that as well, and found out that Maslan Duran was a brand name for a vinyl plastic upholstery. The trademark request was filed in October of 1953. At the end of this video, I'll show a couple of their marketing ads. Some of the text reads, Lovely is the word for Maslan Durand on furniture for every room. Lovely as the most luxurious textured material, yet practical as only plastic can be. I certainly did not expect to find so many interesting tidbits of history when I purchased this table. Once the seat cushion is complete, you can attach it back to the table. My furniture needed a little TLC first though. I wiped off all the dust with a damp cloth before drying it off and applying some Old English lemon oil, which conditions and protects wood. I just used a clean rag, cut from an old work shirt I had, to apply the lemon oil to all the surfaces of the table. I gave special attention to the design on the seat back, using a Q-tip to reach all the nooks and crannies of the flower detailing. I then wiped off the excess oil with an old white t-shirt rag, polishing the wood to a beautiful shine. You definitely want to make sure to wipe up the excess oil and wash your hands before handling your cushion or you'll get oil marks and spots that will ruin all your hard work. Turn the table on its side or upside down so that you can reattach the seat to the table. If you followed my instructions and not left too much bulk on the edges and the corners, 
the screws should push right through the fabric into their original holes. I have no issues, but if you do, you can use a pencil to mark where the hole should be, then remove the seat and punch through the fabric and padding on a stable, flat surface. You can then replace the seat and the screw should go right through the layers of fabric and the padding into the wood. Make sure all the screws are tightened and that the seat is properly secured to the table. You don't want it to be wobbly or loose. Turn the table back over and voila! You've worked a little bit of upholstery magic to turn an outdated piece of furniture into a charming statement for your home. Before I show you the final beauty shots of this table, I want to show you the Massland Duran Penciling and some of the ads they ran to promote this vinyl plastic upholstery fabric. From any angle, it's fine upholstery, lovely colors, pleasing patterns, smooth or textured surfaces that clean easily. Well, there you have it. It's amazing how just changing the fabric makes such a difference in how this phone table looks. Now the bold pattern fabric gives it impact with all the charm and character of the original vintage piece. And the entire project only cost me about $33. $15 for the table, $14 for a yard of fabric, and about $4 worth of batting. The rest of the tools and supplies I already had on hand. I found a couple of these vintage telephone tables online selling for between $90 and $400, so I definitely got a great deal. Let me know in the comments below if you liked how the table turned out. I post a video every Friday, so be sure and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post new content. Check out how to make marbled eggs with nail polish by clicking here, or watch me refinish another old table by clicking here. Thanks to everybody out there watching my videos, and I'll see you next week.